situation, whether it be you, somebody that you give a shit about, somebody that you know, or something that has truly affected you in a very difficult way, very hard way, and it's not bullshit, shit is real, you basically have two options. You can let it consume you, as it did me for quite some time. Or you can take control of the situation. However you do it, whether you're making something, making something better, or making yourself better. If you're not strengthening, you're weakening. If you're not growing, you're shrinking. If you're not living, you're dying. Code it however you want. So what am I talking about? I think I'm gonna remake this. It's a control. I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna see if I can make it a little bit more steampunk. Anyway. What am I talking about? Post-traumatic growth. I've given this some thought. I heard this phrase a while ago, a couple days ago, actually. But by the time this video is done, hey, dog, shut the fuck up. By the time this video is done, that'd be about a month ago. Walking a dog. Somebody walking a dog. Dog losing her shit. But I thought about this. When you're injured, with an injury of the magnitude of what most of us are all fucked up by, that person, one second before your injury, the person you were, has died. You will never be that guy again. You'll never be that girl again. You're never gonna be that person again. When someone near to you has a problem with something that you're exposed to firsthand and it really impacts you and it's really personal. The innocence that you had prior to whomever that is, is gone. It's been replaced with experience. You now realize something. Some experiences are good and some not so fucking much. The ones that you learn the most from are the ones that suck the biggest, most stinky, fucking sweaty, fucking ogre ass on the planet. The worse of the experience, the better the knowledge. The more learning you do. That's basically the basis of post-traumatic growth. You can say, if you accept whatever's around you and you believe there's nothing you can do to help dig the fucking hole. You're no good to yourself and you're no good to anyone else. If you learn and understand and actually really seriously take it and evaluate the situation, evaluate your situation. What the fuck? What the 
flat tire. Gotta fix that motherfucker. Evaluate your situation. Think about where you are, what you can do, how you can do it. Check your resources. Who's in your camp? Who's not in your camp? Because believe me when I say again, I thought I had a lot of people in my camp. And there was a lot of people that knocked the shit out of this house and everything else for the first fucking like a couple months after my injury. When I got home, I was able to hear a collective thump, 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 thump. The sound of fucking work belts hitting the ground and the, and the, and the sound of footprints. Footprints, yeah, footprints don't make sense. Footsteps walking away. For the most part, it's almost like they faded into the future. Almost like they turned into a ghost, a formal shadow, former, a shadow of what their former self used to be. Remember they were. And it really makes you stop and think about the value of life and time. You really ponder the idea of time, 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 time. And then you realize you don't have very much of it. So you have to maximize the amount of either effect or ability or whatever is your measuring stick of progress that you make after a cataclysmic injury of you or to someone else. Once you evaluate that, then you get a better genuine idea of what you are going to do and what you're not going to do. Now, if you simply take the road of the simple, what I can do, and you're just happy with that, turn the fucking video off, go away. All you're doing is breathing. And let me tell you something, just because you're breathing does not mean that you're alive. Life is meant for more than survival. If you're simply alive just to survive, go away. Life is meant for you to thrive. Instead of just being alive, you have to live. You know, understand that shit. That's why I say the urgency to take action should override just about anything else. Whether it be simply trying to you know, recreate something, like, I don't know what the fuck is gonna end up with that thing. I made this fucked up shelf, you know, whatever it is, I keep myself busy. But I decided to take action to better myself. I get involved in research. I train, I come up with different pieces of equipment. I do whatever it is to do. The videos that I do, I don't care if you watch or you don't watch. I think you should watch. But I don't want, want to watch you simply watch me doing something. I want you to watch and realize that I'm taking action, I'm taking responsibility for my life. And I've decided to take back ability. How you go about doing what you have to do. And this is why I posted several videos of, you know, uh, uh, I talked to him yesterday, fucking Rutabaga had uh, John Norton. And he came up with an idea to adapt a piece of equipment, uh, a Bowflex, so that he can train and strengthen. And I talked to him yesterday and told me that he's moving around in his chair much better. Now, that's like a, a progress of this much, but that's what you get. John, keep working, you'll get that much. It might take you a little while, do not fucking give up. I showed you a video several times of different people that I've given the Angry Quad Badass Rhinoceros Award to, that they've taken action. They've decided that spinal cord injury can go fuck itself. And they've decided that they're not going to be that guy. They are going to fucking take back what they want. Oleg over in fucking Poland. The guy is a fucking manimal. He's not from this fucking planet. He's a sick puppy. There's another woman that I just ran into. Um, I think the name is Project Nowitzki. I don't remember off the top of my head. Woman in Poland again. You know, she's a para. But some of the stuff that she does, I look and I go, hey, what the hell is that? And there is one thing that she does, and I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to show you how I went about doing it. She actually sewed something to the backside of her pants to, to help when she's on the floor, so she doesn't get pressure sore. It's like this big cushiony thing she can bounce her little bony ass around on. But they've all taken action. Mark Stevens. Or, yeah. Mark Stevens out in uh, California. 
the first winner of the Badass Angry Quad. Uh, no, is it Mark? Or Dave. I always forget your fucking name. Why? I don't fucking know. Anyway, they've all taken action. They've all experienced post-traumatic growth. They may have not become bigger physically, but as a person, their motivation and their spirituality and their intelligence has overcome their physical limitations. Now, my intent is to physically and fucking mentally overcome my limitations. And believe me, I am not the smartest fucking cookie in the jar by any fucking stretch of the imagination. I just get, I, you know, I've just never ever had really had any time to think before. And believe me, you motherfucker, this shit has given me plenty of time to think. And I hate wasting time, but between a lot of the stuff I get myself involved in, and a lot of people that I've met, and a lot of the research that I get involved in, and a lot of the studies that I read, and a lot of the things that I, you know, that I attempt and fail and fail and keep doing, I strengthen myself. Every fucking failure, I grow. Keep that in mind. Post-traumatic growth. Like I said before, you're either living or dying. You're weakening or strengthening. It's up to you, man. It's up to you. I gotta get back to some shit. Ow.